before plunging into the history of the rapid development of radio broadcasting in the 20s, I would like to sum up some of the results of the first 25 years of radio's existence as a wireless radio telegraph and give a dozen examples of its practical application. The first well-known story of the use of radio communication for a rescue operation was the story of the rescue of the Russian battleship, General Apraskan, which in 1899 was stuck in glaciers tens of miles from the coast, with the help of a spark radio station on the island of Gotland. It was possible to transmit a rescue signal to the icebreaker, Yamak, and he managed to free the battleship from ice captivity. During the year 1902 and 3, the enterprising Marconi obtained from the governments of the United States of America and Great Britain the right to install their radio stations on passenger ships that plied the Miss Old and New Worlds. Around the same time, in 1903, the International Radio Telegraph Convention allocated a special radio frequency of 500 kHz exclusively for emergency calls for help, on which it was strictly forbidden to conduct any communication in non-emergency situations. In 1906, the same organization ratified the single standard SOS emergency signal for all countries which began to be used in 1908. On January 23, 1909, the American liner, Republica, and the Italian steamship, Florida, collided off the coast of North America. Radio operator Jeff Binns sent out a distress signal for 14 hours until the Baltic steamship picked it up and arrived just in time to rescue the passengers. Binns became a hero and with him the Marconi transmitter and its inventor became famous. In addition to popularity, it earned Guglielmo Marconi a Nobel Prize nomination. In the next three years, at least nine more ships that suffered accidents or disasters were saved only in the Atlantic. Steamers Arapaho, Slavonia, Kentucky, Merida, Admiral Farragut, Lexington, Dorothy, Costa Ontario, Canadian cruiser Niobe and U.S. Navy tug Sterling. They were all saved thanks to Marconi's radio telegraph system. But soon another very tragic event happened, which confirmed the need for radio communication at sea. As you guessed, it will be about the liner Titanic. It was a fantastic passenger liner at that time in terms of size and comfort made according to the latest science and technology. It was equipped with powerful steam engines of 50,000 horsepower, six 100-volt direct current generators and two spark transmitters of 5 kilowatts each. However, the main purpose of these radio stations was not yet security, but a purely commercial interest, the transmission of telegrams of rich passengers to the mainland. There were so many of them that two radio operators did not have time to send all the orders received during the day until late at night. It is because of this that they missed the warning of the radio operators of the oncoming ships about a large iceberg on the course of the ship. On the night of April 15, 1912, David Sarnov, a young operator of the Marconi Telegraph radio station on the east coast of the USA, was on duty and unexpectedly caught a distress signal. Titanic collided with an iceberg. It goes to the bottom quickly. For three days, the radio operator did not leave the device, having managed to establish contact with the ships, Olympic, and Carpatia, which rushed to hell. His radiograms included tragic stories of the rescue and death of passengers, lists of those who survived and those who died. 
the whole world followed the disaster through the press, to which information was supplied by David on the radio from the Titanic. Sarnov's photo was on the front pages of all the world's newspapers. This is how a new star was born. An emigrant from Tsarist Russia, who became famous throughout the world. And the world saw that thanks to the radio communication systems installed on the Titanic and the Carpathia, it was possible to conduct a fairly successful rescue operation, even though the Carpathia reached the disaster site only three hours after the Titanic sank. And due to the lack of lifeboats on the Titanic, it was possible to save only 700 passengers. After this terrible disaster, the International Radio Telegraph Convention and the governments of the USA, Great Britain and most countries of the world obliged all ships to be equipped with radio stations with a 24-hour watch. And the Giulielmo Marconi Company once again confirmed its authority and undisputed leadership in the production of wireless radio telegraph systems. David Sarnov also became the hero of this epic. But this was only the beginning of his outstanding career as a radio promoter and businessman. In 1915, Sarnov sent a note to Marconi outlining a plan to turn radio into a source of mass information, but Marconi considered this proposal unpromising. You can understand his arguments. There were few radio amateurs, radio receivers were very expensive and only caught telegraph messages. However, luck was kind to David Sarnov and brought him together with the inventor Edwin Armstrong, who built a cheap and small regenerative radio receiver in 1913, and in 1918 patented a superheterodyne. For Sarnov, it was a find. Taking advantage of his popularity after the Titanic disaster, Sarnov initiates the creation of the Radio Corporation of America, RCA. This coincided with the plans of the US government to get rid of the monopoly of Marconi and Great Britain and to create a powerful national radio corporation to fulfill the orders of the Navy and the US Army. Such industrial giants as General Electric and Westinghouse also invested in it. David buys Armstrong's patent for a superheterodyne for $1 million and, as a good businessman, receives an order from the state for the production of radio equipment for government communications. Thus, RCA becomes the leader and the most successful radio corporation in the United States of America for the next 50 years. But I will tell about its rapid development and the beginning of mass radio broadcasting in the USA in the next series.